This is interesting. I've never seen this game before, and I don't even remember buying the thing. Spider. What absurd shit is this? It's got a gun for a leg. It could have been worse. The CD could have been missing. Well, I guess since it's not, let's see what this game is all about. So Spider begins with a cutscene like most games do. There's a scientist in a lab called Microtech and he's pissing about with a spider. He's trying to link his brain to it so he can fork control it. More than likely, it's for military purposes, like secret stealth missions. Or he's just some nut job. You can decide on that one. Anyway, someone wants to steal his tech. The scientist executes a mind-link program and all of a sudden, some goon bursts into the room and shoots the poor bastard. I mean, what awful timing is that? Also, I thought the plan was to steal his tech not destroy it, and it gets worse. The gun kidnaps him. It's just not his day, is it? In the aftermath, we see the spider roam free along with all the other bug experiments, but here's the catch. The spider is still mind linked to the scientist. Yeah, I get it. So it's up to us, the player, to rescue ourselves. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, but what the fuck were they smoking when they came up with that idea? Here we are, the first level, and... Oh, I already have an issue with it. Why is it when you stick to the wall, you can't pick up the collectibles? Oh wait, you have to jump off? Why did they do this? It's a piss take. Why can't you just crawl through them? It would be a lot simpler. For some strange reason, there's an odd graphical glitch with a spider. It isn't displaying properly, but not to worry, if you press the starter button, you can have a closer look. So as you can see, this is a 2D side scroller in a 3D environment. The gameplay is pretty straightforward. You scurry around and jump through the level, avoiding hazards and other creatures. The controls is okay too. It's responsive. The spider acts like a spider spurster. It crawls, it sticks to walls, it hangs on webs. You get the idea. While crawling around, you can pick up DNA. Or shall I say, jump for it. If you collect 100 DNA, you'll get an extra life. Or you can just find one. There's a few of these hidden in plain sight. Also, when you die, you get to keep the DNA too. It sounds good, right? You don't lose it. The gameplay throws plenty at you. However, it's pointless because you see, it's one of those die and do it all again kind of games. There's no checkpoints, it's nonsense. Couldn't they be bothered to throw in at least one? It's a good thing the levels are short. They only take a few minutes to complete and when it's game over, you just get another three lives. So the DNA thing, why did they even bother? So far, Spider is okay. The gameplay is outdated for sure by today's standards, but back then in the 90s and early 2000s, it must have looked cool. So like I said, this game is all right, but the huge problem with it is the absence of checkpoints. You go around collecting everything as you would, then out of nowhere, you get caught off guard and it's back to the pissing start. You need to do it all over again. It's like the game gives you the middle finger. You have to be cautious when turning corners. Oh, the, the, it's a good thing you can pick up a few weapons along the way. They'll give you somewhat an advantage over the other bugs. You can get homing missiles, a flamethrower, a poisoner, and a boom. Boom for boomerang. This is my favorite weapon, as it doesn't require any ammo. Yeah, take that shit bag. You can find these as well. You can take an extra hit, but nine times out of 10, you'll lose it as soon as you pick it up. 
I'm getting sick of this. Taking the same route, collecting the same shit every time you die. It's repetitive and it's boring. It's so boring that I could easily slip into a coma. That's the exit. Yeah, this is the exit point, a green ball thingy. It's what we need to look for to finish the level, but on the other hand, it's hard to do so because each level is like a bloody maze. You don't know where you're going half the time. A map to look at would have been nice right now, but no, we don't get one. And if you want to advance through the story, you need to hit a certain number of exit points. That's right, Sherlock. Some levels has more than one. You will need to go back and replay them. Just when I thought this game couldn't get any more tedious, it throws a shite curveball like this. I think they was trying to add some replayability here, but I've replayed the lab so many times now, I don't think I need to play the bastard anymore. So two weeks later, we're now in a factory. We jump over boxes, avoid heavy machinery and ride conveyor belts. The levels are imaginative, I'll give them that, but they're just annoying. Like I said, you have to know what's coming. Once you've completed the factory, then it's a boss fight. And it's so uninspired. You have to crawl around in a circle for the entire fight. It's starting to make me feel dizzy. Did they honestly thought, hmm, yes, this is what the players will find fun. The result is that it's stupidly tiresome. Where's the boss's health bar anyway? I want this fight to be over with. Uh, actually, I don't think there is one. How did they forget to include that? All you can do is slash the claw when you get the chance and hope the fight ends. Next, we make our way through to the city. There's not much to say here besides, the game is still hard as shit. I do like this part level though, probably because the level design reminds me of Upstream from the first Crash Bandicoot game. Can you see the similarities? I'll tell you what I can see. Checkpoints! After the city, we roam around in the museum. But can someone tell me why there is an active volcano? Who in the right frame of mind would put one of them up for display? I'm not joking. Look, it's simply called Volcano. Come on, come on! Make it of the lava. Oh, piss off. I can't describe the frustration I am feeling right now. The shield always wears off right before you get to the exit. And by the way, this is quite a long level. It takes a, quite a bit of time to get to this point. Oh, come on this time. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna jump for it. All that effort for fuck all. Look, I don't have a problem with a challenging game, but when it does that to you, you know it's a load of bollocks. It's like the game lures you in, making you believe that you're going to make the jump, but then out of nowhere, you die in the lava for the hundredth time. You start to feel the burn for real, but it's on the inside, and you have to accept the fact you have to play the entire level again just for another crack at it. <sighs> what a load of shit. The museum has a boss too, but what is this? What is this monstrosity? It looks like a dangling turd. The problem with this fight is that it's way too easy. There's only one attack pattern. He either swings to the left or to the right. There's no cheap shots. You just jump over the projectiles and throw the boomerang. This is as good as it gets. Did they even try to make this boss fight challenging? The only challenging thing about it is trying to cope with the boredom. How many hits does this piece of shit need to take? Well, that was anticlimactic. Now we're in the sewers. We saw something like this earlier in the city. The water looked like toxic waste that had been pumped out from the labs, and that would have made sense. But here, it's just your typical boring sewage pipes. Hey, I finally managed to upgrade the spider. About time. It has a fresh coat of chrome paint. And I've just lost it. Never mind, it may look cool, but however, you don't get a perk or anything like that. It's a missed opportunity, really. They could have gave you an extra hit point or something, the type bastards. So after the sewers, it's the final area of the game, the evil lab, and I've only been playing about two to three hours. I can see why they make us go back and replay the levels. The story is way too short. And how did we go from a grim sewer setting to the inside of a high-tech computer? I don't get it. 
What's even more funny is that the next level takes place on the laptop side. Wouldn't it make more sense to put this level first? And to top it off, the third level is another computer one. So what's the point of the first one? Did you see that? There's a sneaky bug at the exit. If I didn't have an extra hit point, I would have died and started at the beginning again. Not this time, because we have made it to the final boss of the game. Who's the arsehole who's trying to steal the mind link tech? Who is it? Let's finish this. You're telling me this blob of pink shit has been pulling the strings all along? This is right bizarre. I'll be honest, I didn't expect this. Them eyes, they stare right through your soul. This fight is nearly identical to the first boss. You run around avoiding the claw attack again. Really? We have to do it again? And all they've done to change it up this time was added some lasers. Also, there's six electrical rods placed around. You can make the brain stab these for extra damage. Watch out for the metal spine pulling back. That's when you know to dodge. Once all six rods have been used, just slash the claw a couple more times, then the game is won. A cutscene plays and we see the spider free the scientist and he merely escapes as the building explodes. I'm happy to say, I'm done here. There you go, that's the whole game. It's just your average platformer. Crawling around as a spider was fun at first, but after a while, the novelty completely disappeared. I can see why this game faded into obscurity. There were just better platformers to play. There was Crash Bandicoot, there was Spyro, Rayman, Oddworld, Castlevania, and the list goes on. Play them instead. I would. Well, I think that wraps it up. Fucking noise again. Fucking it, spiders. No. Stay away from anything with eight legs. Fuck me.